Good afternoon, Sunday afternoon in early April. Hope everything's going well with you. Where am I today? I'm in Ellensburg, Washington. Come on now. This is home. Specifically, I'm a few miles west of town near the little farming town of Thorpe. You're looking south right now across the Yakima River, Menashtash Ridge that I was talking about in the Portland Hills video. That's right there. And our destination today are those white bluffs along the old road, Highway 10. Before they built Interstate 90, this was the main road from Ellensburg to Kalielum and then on to Seattle. Us locals still use this road a fair amount, and everybody locally knows the White Bluffs out at Thorpe. And you're like, okay, well, let me take a look at those rocks. Yeah, that's what we're doing in just a second. But the last thing I want to say before we head over there is that I have a number of geology videos planned for this spring involving home, involving Central Washington University um, and the geology department. I, I tipped you all off that that was coming last time I spoke to you live in February. So here it is April, and I'm just letting you know that I, I'm going to be starting uh, a number of these CWU geology videos. Now there'll be still plenty of other things going, depending on my travels and my interest and who I visit with and that sort of thing. So the variety that I have had for the last few weeks will continue, but one theme that will be emerging this spring is talking about the geology department at Central Washington University. So I hope you enjoy those and I hope you're not surprised by those when I start pumping those out soon enough. Oh my God, lot number one. Okay, well, take a good look. More homes going in. <laughs> okay. Well, it sure is pleasant right now. And the Yakima River is flowing away from us here. Oh heck, one, one last shot, why not? We don't have any wind. Don't have any wind. And if you know this valley in springtime, that is a rarity. I'm getting carried away up here, but I can't, I can't help it. The view is too good. I haven't been up here at this little spot before. So let's take advantage of this. Okay, down to the road, and a close-up look at the white bluffs. Thank you. Okay, it's time to go over across the road, leave the Yakima River, and check out this rock. Now, there's a number of very convenient places to park. The main pull-off is not this location, but a little bit further to the west. I'll give you the GPS location in the link below uh, for this little spot here. So I'm purposely doing this to myself because this is not my normal stop. Um, I also purposely did not bring a hammer so that I can just kind of approach this in a most basic way. So let me give you a sense of the outcrop first of all. Taking a nice stretch without traffic at the moment. And I hope you can see there's some impressive layering. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? And so maybe you're thinking, as a geology rookie, oh, this maybe this is a sedimentary rock then, a bunch of layers of sandstone or something. And I can see why you would think that, but right off the bat, I'm hoping you can see that not only these layers are very light colored, but there's an incredible amount of very fragile pumice in these 
layers. And when I say pumice, I always use the word fragile. And right off the bat, if you really think about it, and we're testing the iPhone now, we'll see how sparkly things can get. Is the sparkly nature of this outcrop apparent to you with the photography? I, I won't know until I see the replay. But I'm seeing all sorts of beautiful little diamond sparkles. I'm coming even tighter for you. And just trying to describe now, we've got little rounded stones, some of them quite hard. This is an andesite. We'll come back out. Still trying to just kind of give you a chance to observe along with me here. Well, this is a much better spot to stop with my students. How come I haven't stopped here for the last 30 years? Again, I'm usually down around the corner up there where the parking lot is a lot bigger. But this is safer in the sense that we don't have an incredibly steep bank. I know it may look like it, but um, if you do decide to come out here, my usual spot down around the corner is perfectly sheer. And so there's usually rock coming down, especially if it's windy. Uh, because this is a poorly cemented, loosely lithified collection of layers. Gosh, dang, okay, I think it's official. I'm, I'm going to spend the last 10 years of my teaching career coming here. God. Oh, man. So I suppose I've already given away what this is in the title of the video. Not sure what I've decided, but I'm probably going to call it the Thorpe Mudflow or the Thorpe Lahar. And if you're a fan of this channel for a long, long time, some of the earliest videos that I did were from here. I mean, this is it's hard to beat an exposure like this of volcanic mud flows. But since this is a place that is not that familiar to me, in other words, this specific face, I'm kind of getting some new thoughts that I haven't had with my usual stick around the corner. Why is there all this fragile pumice in amongst these heavily stratified layers. So we need a volcanologist now to really nail some things down. Like right here we have, God, this is impressive. I gotta say, come on now. A bunch of fine layers. Some of them clearly are river rocks, river cobbles andesites, rhyolites, granites, a few metamorphics. But within these fine layers are these fragile pumice clasts. So I don't think we can just say this is the Yakima River long ago depositing these layers. So the sun is now behind a cloud. I don't know if that helps or hurts us, but I'll just keep rolling. So I don't know what to make of these layers. And you're like, you are kidding me. You've lived here for 30 years teaching Geology 101. You really don't know the details of this exposure? No, I don't. 
because this has not been sufficiently studied in my humble opinion. And you're like, what have you folks been doing at the university that's like 10 miles away? Well, doing other things. We haven't had the expertise here with these kinds of deposits. And so we do have a brand new volcanology professor and I'm gonna bring her out here, maybe even film it, and see if she can point a few things out to us. Oh my heavens. So even at an outcrop that I have visited <laughs> hundreds, maybe thousands of times, I want to learn some new things. Now to me, the dramatic change in this outcrop, God, it only gets better as we go this way and the sun just came out again, is that we have this finely layered material with river stones, river rocks, and some fragile pumice within it. I have my thoughts, but we'll, we'll save it for uh, the volcanology specialist coming out here. Oh no, why not? I'm wondering if these are some kind of surge deposits. And I, I barely know what I'm talking about now. But if you are close enough to a volcanic source, a composite cone volcanic source, you can have enough exposure, sorry, you can have enough energy, eruptive energy uh, to blast out a bunch of hot pumice in these individual sheets. And that can involve not only the river cobbles that were innocently sitting there, but also this fragile pumice coming from the volcanic center. But I'm hoping that you can see, and this is how we'll finish this short video, that things abruptly change here. So just observationally, we have these finely bedded, perhaps very explosive surge deposits. I'll be interested in what you have to say, especially if you're a specialist in this area, a volcanologist, and you, you know exactly how to interpret this, I'd love to be able to use this forum to get some information from you or some ideas. But to me, the star of the show is this, and this is just one of a number of volcanic mud flows. And this shows such a nice erosional kind of uh, beveled surface. I don't know how else to describe it. We can ho easily see, can't we? That there's a different erosional pattern to this lahar or volcanic mud flow versus the stuff that's above. And you're like, well, what else do I see in here that proves that this is not what's going on a little bit younger? And the answer is we don't have any layering here. And you're like, well, sure we do. I see a big fat layer. Okay, well, I'm saying, where are the tiny layers? You want me to pull back? We don't have any cars right now. Oh, yes, we do. Hang on, let me get across. Muffler boy. We can see our rather repetitive fine layers, and then suddenly that goes away. Can you see that? We just lose those fine layers. Okay, I'm gonna, I, I usually, no, we're good. It's gonna go in a whole different direction. I'm not going to. Our interpretation is that this material all came in at once. That this is a classic look of a volcanic mud flow. Yeah, like what happened in Mount St. Helens in 1980 coming down the Toodle River. Yeah, like happened 5,600 years ago with the Osceola mud flow from Mount Rainier coming down the White River Valley. Sure, plenty of other examples worldwide. But right here, just a few miles from our campus, we have a number of volcanic mud flows, not just one. So I'm confident in the volcanic mud flow. I'm not very confident in how to interpret 
these deposits here. And I'll finish with a couple of basic nuggets. These have been studied just enough to know that we are roughly 10 million years ago with these deposits. And that means the cone, the composite cone volcano that's responsible for not only the lahar, but possibly these other explosive layers, that volcano has eroded away. It's a ghost volcano, it's gone. There's been some study, but maybe we need some more to pinpoint the eruptive center that produced this Thorpe Lahar or Thorpe mud flow. Work done by Paul Hammond and others and a few former students of Bob Bentley, who you'll hear plenty about this month, uh, came up with a source um, over by Bumping Lake, which as the crow flies is to the south. Uh, but you may know that these lahars follow river valleys and the river valley no longer exists. The river valley that, that delivered this lahar has been cut off by uplifting Yakima folds, like I was talking about a few days ago with the West Hills of Portland. Okay, <laughs> kind of fun. I have questions even when I'm in my own backyard. Can you believe it? Thank you. I love you and goodbye.